How's it going, everyone? My name's Ben. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Physical. We're a decentralized location data market. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about data, specifically location data. And I know all of you have smartphones, and I'm willing to bet in the past day, your location data has been collected and sold uh, by at least one of the apps on your phone. So topics for today are how is your loca location data actually collected and sold, and sort of a new approach uh, and a, mo a more realistic approach to allowing you to claim your data with blockchain. So let's kick this off. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with this screen on your Android phone that says, can we access your location? Uh, and what's actually happening after you click allow is third-party software in apps on your phone is actually beginning to collect your location data and beginning to sell it to many, many co companies and marketplaces all around the world. And this happens indefinitely until you actually delete the app or shut off location. So what does the data actually look like? I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, all right, what is this data? Um, well, it's fairly simple. It's uh, a device ID. Uh, unique to all of your phones. It's latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, it's an accuracy. There's actually an accuracy of how accurate those latitude and longitude coordinates are. There's an IP address and there's a timestamp. And this happens on your phone hundreds, uh, if not thousands of times a day. Uh, so where does this data go? Well, again, it's pretty simple. This data goes uh, to uh, a database, either from the, the app's database or a, a third-party software's database, and then they package that data up into a simple CSV file. They have a timer, and they send that out hourly or daily to marketplace, data marketplaces and companies who, in turn, sell that data to more marketplaces and companies around the world. Now we get to our problem, is that app earns all the money from that. They earn a medium-sized app in this space earns about $100,000 a month, and that's about you know, a million users, let's say. And consumers, individuals, all of you, get none of it. You don't get a piece of the pie. So how do we fix that? Well, blockchain can help. You know, all of you are familiar with blockchain. Um, and what it can do for data is it can allow you to claim your data and tie you specifically to your data. Uh, so that when your data is sold around the world to different companies, different marketplaces, uh, it can be attributed back to you, and you can actually benefit and get paid. But what I'm about to explore is actually the typical approach that many blockchain and crypto companies are taking right now uh, to solve this problem. And what I call it is a consumer-first approach. And you're probably all aware of this is there's a lot of data marketplaces out there. They have a, an app, a mobile app, that you download, and you start sharing your data, and you get a few tokens for doing that. You get paid. And that's backed by some you know, decentralized data marketplace, um, which you know, sells the data to some buyer somewhere. Um, you get paid, and everything's great, right? It's not really the case. Um, in my opinion, the consumer-first approach, uh, really, it's only claiming net new data. So if you think about an app on your phone that you just downloaded and uh, you know, uh, started allowing it to use your data and getting paid for that, you know, what about all the other apps on your phone? For real change, you need to think about, we need to think about a mechanism to actually claim your data and take back your data from all of the apps out there. And here's a visual of what I'm talking about is you, know, you have apps feeding into a data marketplace, and then you have data buyers buying that data. But really, with the existing model, the consumer-first approach, where you download an app and you start claiming your data and getting paid, you're really only claiming a, a tiny percentage of the data. 99.9% .9 of all the data about you is still out there, still being traded. You're not claiming any of it. You're not benefiting from any of it. So I want to explore a more realistic approach uh, to this situation. I think number one is let's forget about the consumer app. I think companies have to realize that uh, you know, this data trade is a massive business to business market. I mean, there are thousands of apps and data suppliers and you know, hundreds, thousands of other data buyers out there that are trading this. It's worth billions, if not trillions of dollars. So instead, what if companies focused more downstream? They focused on you know, 
the, a data marketplace or the tools uh, between these businesses and then allowed consumers to claim your data from those tools or from that marketplace. So if you as a consumer can claim all of your data in one go. And that would look like this. So imagine a situation where all of you could claim your data from a marketplace rather than from an app, claim all of your data from the marketplace in one go and benefit greatly uh, because you can think of it as sort of like a net that catches all of your data in the marketplace uh, before it's passed along to buyers so then it can be attributed back to you. Um, so thoughts on how to do this. General thoughts is I think companies should be thinking about you know, a business first approach. So getting the centralized companies out there, the apps on your phone, the data suppliers, the data buyers, to use your marketplace, to use your tools first. Uh, get adoption there. Focus on growing a real business with you know, centralized companies. And then later on, allow consumers to claim data from you know, your marketplace or your tool uh, that controls a lot more of the data in this ecosystem. Um, why does this work? Um, consumers now are incentivized to share their data. They're getting paid. They're getting a lot more money because they're claiming their data from a much larger market. Um, it's mutually beneficial. All the data buyers in the space would much rather have data that's authorized by the end consumer to use. Uh, you as an individual are getting paid, and the data suppliers are happy because now there's sort of a regulatory wall there. They know that the, the data they're sending out is eventually being claimed or authorized by the consumer. And if, there's, if the data buyers uh, you know, see that they're getting authorized data, they'll, more data buyers may come into the space and start buying more data, which can be passed along to the data suppliers. Um, lastly, since, you know, since consumers are, are actually incentivized to share their data, you know, that helps with advancing society. So I think that you know, the general idea of open innovation powering, open information powering innovation, um, which leads everyone to a better quality of life is really important. Um, and I'll end it with just this cool video of actual data that's taken from Physical's location data market uh, on the Trump inauguration in 2017. So sort of playing to the voter registration presentation before this, um, this is, this is data from mobile phones. And I think it's cool, it just shows the power of, you know, if you share your data, you can help people, you can help businesses make better decisions and you know, prove things are factual. Thank you very much, my name is Ben Smith. Uh, you can reach me at ben at physical.org. And uh, have a good one. <laughs>